Warning! The opinions on this podcast are of the hosts and guests only, and may contain childish humor. Listen at your own discretion. And now, please adjust your headphone volumes to an unreasonable level and prepare to enjoy the most dynamic and electrifying podcast that cyberspace has encountered. Hello, everyone! Welcome back to the show! This is episode 52 of Sports Plus with Rob and Chris! I hope everybody is doing well. Thank you for listening to us. We love all of our feedback that we get from you guys. If you are not subscribed to this podcast, make sure to do so now. And if you're not following us on Instagram or Facebook, check us out at Sports Bliss with Rob and Chris. So let's just dive in today. So I have, or Rob has some stuff on the agenda that we want to discuss. So we're going to go over some NFL news, and then we're going to talk about the NCAA ruling on the name image likeness. Let's get paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is going to affect sports in a lot of ways, but we'll get to that later. Let's start with just some NFL news. You want me to start with the biggest first? Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let's do it. I'm going to start with your favorite, Jameis Winston. No. I know. Why? Because you love him. Ugh. So. I roll. You know, apparently he's signing with the Saints. The Saints? I know. Yep. I was yep. shocked. Yeah. I'm I was shocked. so shocked. But, you know, it's a one-year, $1 million deal. So it's not very much. It's not a lot of risk for the Saints. So if I look at it from the Saints' side, they have Jameis Winston. He was a number one pick. They can try to rehab him and see if they can make something out of him. He doesn't have to play this year. They could try to let him sit next to Breeze, get, quote-unquote, good coaching. They, Someone from the Saints came out and said he's going to have better coaching this year than he's had his whole life. Wow. Now, that was a burn. I mean, they're... Well, I don't know. Well, Bruce Arians for the Bucks is supposed to be the quarterback whisperer. He wrote a book. Yeah. He wrote a book about it. You're right. Yeah. You know? And so Jimbo Fisher is not a bad coach either at FSU. I don't know. We'll see. But he gets, it's not a lot of risk for the Saints. They can watch him for a year. Yeah. If they don't like him, they just let him go. Yeah, true. You know? I mean, it's only a year and he's taking a huge pay cut. And he's not their starter. Uh, Hell no. And if Breeze retires after next season then maybe they found their guy. Because Taysom Hill is not going to be that guy. They just re-signed him for $16 million. And he's getting paid more than Jameis. Oh, yeah. And he's only thrown like 16 passes total. That's crazy. You know, he usually runs the ball and all. Okay, I really hope that whatever happens with Jameis, that he takes whatever criticism to heart and actually changes his, his soul well, listen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So, so someone was saying, they were like, well, I think it depends a lot on what he does. You know, if he just, you know, if he really listens to Breeze and takes him as a mentor and kind right. of listens to the coaches and all, he may be able to turn this thing around. We'll see. Or he could just be standing there on the sideline next to Breeze. But you can't He ain't going to learn it that way. But listen, you cannot change interceptions. I know. That's, you know, that was, you that can was a big change, stat. You can change his attitude and how he plays, but those interceptions, you, I mean, what? No, that was a big stat. So, right, Jameis threw, what, 30 interceptions last year? 30 for 30, right? Yeah. Well, 33 touchdowns and 30 um, interceptions. But he also had six fumbles that were lost. We won't talk about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but please don't. <laughs> I'm bitter if you can't tell. But um, so he had that number, right? Breeze has had like 17 interceptions in the last three years. Yeah. Combined. Yeah. You know, so I mean, people really kind of underestimate how good Drew Breeze is. I love Drew Breeze. No, he's great. So, so that was interesting. So the second big piece of news: Andy Dalton cut from the Bengals. I know, but wait, that's not a big shocker. I'm not shocked. I thought for sure that they probably would have cut him. Maybe not this year, but definitely next year. Well, I thought maybe they would kind of have him hang around and not put so much pressure on Burrow. But so obviously he's going to be. They're going to throw. They're going to throw Burrow to the fire <laughs> and just. Do you think he can handle it? I don't know. Because listen, you can be, what is the saying? You can be a big fish in a small pond and then 
when you get into a big pond, you're a tiny fish? Well, this is the thing that would make me worried. I think he's very talented. I think he's very smart. You know, I think he's a good quarterback. But they just broke the record of draft picks from LSU on one year. I saw that. You know? Yeah. So you're saying he had that much talent on the team. And they were all first, second, third round picks. They weren't like fifth, sixth round players. Yeah. They were all first, second, third round. That means they're going to be players in the NFL. Yeah. So he has that. He had that type of talent on his team. And so now what happens when he goes to the Bungles? Bungles? You never heard them called the Bungles? The Bungles? Yeah, because they just bungalow? they bungle everything up. Like a bungalow? Yeah. <laughs> no, they just bungle it, you know? <laughs> okay. So, so it'll be interesting to see how Joe, Joe Burrows does there. But what does Andy Dalton do? Remember I talked about before, he would be a good fit with the Patriots. And yeah, now everybody's putting it out there on Instagram. <laughs> They're all saying it now. <laughs> you said, why do I want that guy on my team? That's what you told me before. Wait, what? When we talked about it before. Yeah. You know? Oh, I, that, that I do want him on the no, team? No, you didn't. You were like, I don't want I don't want him coming to the Patriots. Yeah. Well, I mean. But he would be a good fit. I mean, he's kind of bland, but he's a solid quarter starting quarterback. And he would be good for that that team. What are his stats compared to their quarterback now? There were, wasn't he um, the second string quarterback? Oh, it, Stidham? Yeah. He's thrown two. Stidham has thrown two passes his oh, career. Lord. So Oy he's vey. he's very unproven. Now they have, I think, Brian Hoyer also. So he's like a veteran, but he's right. not gonna be your starter. You no. know, you, you you if you're a Patriot fan, you hope he's not your starter. So you think he's gonna go to the Patriots? That's what a lot of people are speculating now. And I said that before. I said I he's a guy a that would be a good for fit. Them. It'd be a good move. I that's, mean that's when everybody was talking about Dak Prescott to the Patriots and he ain't Cam going nowhere. Newton to the Patriots. He ain't and... going nowhere. Cam Newton's gonna be sitting on his couch because he ain't yeah. going nowhere. <laughs> what do they say? You remember those cars? The you go. Oh yeah, you, you go. go nowhere. <laughs> I loved that. I'm I just hating that. on Cam. Sorry. I know. So we'll see what happens with Andy Dalton. So speaking of Cam Newton, he's still not signed. He won't be. And I, I don't know what, who's going to sign him. No one's. Gonna he's going to have to him, sign I'm a sorry. deal like like Winston for like a million. But it's funny because I thought that Cam would be picked before Jameis for some reason. Yeah, I don't. Jameis has a lot of talent throwing the ball. His problem is decision making. Cam Newton is breaking down with his body. Yeah. You know, which is what a lot of people worry about Lamar Jackson. Okay. It's just there are different parts of their career, you know, because well, yeah, of course. He's Cam's a big dude yeah. and he would run the ball a lot. He took a lot of hits. Remember when they were complaining a few years ago saying he was taking so many hits yeah. that other quarterbacks wouldn't take? Yeah. And they were like, they're not even calling penalties. Yeah. So he's he's beaten up his body a lot, but, you know, we'll see. But there aren't very many spots. If you look around the NFL, everybody's kind of settled in. He's going to have to take some backup spot. Maybe maybe he can go to the Lions or something. Or who yeah. knows, you know, I mean, somewhere and back up and hope he gets another chance. Or if the XFL comes back. <laughs> There'll always be a spot for you there, Cam. You're just full of jokes today. I love it. Sorry. I'm a I love fired it. up. Okay, so the last quarterback news, and then we'll move to a little other NFL news. Okay. There was a big article about Aaron Rodgers. You know, they drafted that Jordan Love. Yeah, yeah, In the yeah. first round, and everybody, you know, everybody, all the Packer, Packers fans were pissed. Because Why? they're like, they're like, they needed more help for um, Aaron Rodgers. They're like, we need receivers, we need this. And someone came out with this graph of he has one touchdown pass to a first-round receiver in his whole career. Wow. Because he's never had first-round draft pick wide receivers. Okay. But Jordy Nelson was like pick 34th. He was like two two spots out of the first round, and he's caught most of his touchdowns. I mean, you know, Brady didn't have that many either until he got – um, Antonio Brown this year and until he got Randy Moss he had a ton that year when he threw all those touchdowns and broke the record right you know so I mean I don't know I think I think people are kind of blowing this a little out of proportion this guy was drafted and they asked Brett Favre about it they're like are they pushing Aaron Rodgers out and the coach came out and said he's like I'm kind of just tired of this Aaron Rodgers act 
because apparently he's a big pain in the butt. Yeah, no, know? but that's no secret. No, everybody knows that, but he's already fed up with it. He's only been there, what, two years or something? I think, aren't they setting this up that he's planning on leaving anyway? Well, no, no that's, he doesn't want to leave, but I think after next year or the next year, his contract is very tradable. So that puts Jordan Love in his third year. Right. And so the idea is to have Jordan Love ready to take over. Makes sense. And this is what they did with Brett Favre when they drafted Aaron Rodgers. He sat a couple of years on the bench and then took over and they got rid of Brett Favre. So history's going to repeat itself. Yeah. I but mean, listen, it's just the nature of the game. But Aaron Rodgers is 36. He's, you know, it's just like. You're too old. Yeah. No, but he's 36. You know, he's 36. A team, the GM has to plan for the future. And you yeah. can't bet on a fourth round draft pick no. of a quarterback. At some point, if you see a guy that you think can be a franchise quarterback and you can get him, because they always pick in the late half of the round because they're good. If you think you have a guy, you got to take them. I think the problem is, and the coaches and the team, they're doing what's best for the team coming up like yeah, later. Yeah, the future, yeah. But Aaron Rodgers wants to win like now. Well, this is the classic struggle between players and organizations, right? Mm -hmm. Players, as they get older, they're like, give me all the weapons you can. That was Tom Brady, right? Yeah. Give me all the weapons I can have because I want to win. I only have a couple of years left. Yeah. Whereas the organization is like, well, you know, really, are, are we going to win in these two years? Right. Or do we, we owe it to our fans to stay good. Right. We don't want to be the worst team in the league. So do you mortgage everything to be good today? And maybe you do if you can win a Super Bowl. But with the Patriots, they'd already won, what, six? Yeah. So, you know, if you're the Bucks, it's different. You go for that move because you've won one Super Bowl in your whole history. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, or if you're Cleveland, you do the same thing, right? Right, right. But it depends the organization you're with. But, you know, you got to look long term if you're the GM. You right. can't just look today. That was very inspirational. Oh, I didn't think you. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway, so the uh, the Bucks, they're yes. again, they are again being like everybody's talking about them saying they were tampering. Of course they were. The latest, of is, course they were. I mean, everybody just wants to talk smack. I know. They're just jealous. That's what I say, everybody. We got them. We're going to Super Bowl. We going to Super Bowl. So anyway, so it came out, Rob Gronkowski. He was like, oh, yeah, I've had the Bucks playbook for months. He's such an idiot. I, think, I love a, him so much, but he is a, he is a straight idiot. Yeah, and, and everybody's kind of blowing it out of proportion and all this kind of stuff. He was, A, and they're like, oh, he was under contract with the Patriots. A, he was retired. He ain't coming back to the Patriots. He's been retired for over a year. What, is, what are they yeah. talking about? And the Patriots benefited from him coming back. They got a draft pick out of it. Right. He was never going to play for the Patriots again. No. So get over it. Do you really think Belichick is that dumb? First no. of all. He saw the opportunity. He had to trade him because Gronkowski was coming out of retirement and he's not playing for the Patriots. They didn't even have room for him on the team salary no. wise. So they had to get rid of him. They were forced. And secondly, Gronkowski, wasn't he doing commentating and like analyst stuff on Fox? He was on the show. Yeah, 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 They you're get right. playbooks. They let them look at playbooks and stuff. How do you think they know all this stuff? Yeah, true. They, they're not that smart. But it also, it depends on how he was asked or how was the question asked? Did they take it and like manipulate I it? Think, I think they blew it up a lot more than it really was. Yeah, because they probably just asked him a simple question and he answered and then they just took it and ran with it. It's like, oh, look, now the Bucks are trying to cheat. Yeah, You're so just I'm, hating. Saying, I'm saying nothing. Yeah, exactly. Nothing. Snitches get stitches. Exactly. <laughs> so the NCAA. Yes, yes, yes. Let's talk about this. So this name, image, likeness, that's where players can get paid, you know, sponsorships or whatever directly into their pocket. Now, remember, this? they came out this week and the NCAA said they're going to allow it, but many states have already passed it. Florida's starting this summer, I think. California passed it. North Carolina passed it. A bunch of states already passed it. So schools were going to start doing it regardless. And this goes back... This kind of, in a way, goes back to UCF. There was a national story. Remember that punter or kicker for UCF that had the YouTube channel? 
and he wanted to monetize yeah. it and all. And basically, Scott Frost had to tell him, listen, you got to shut down the page or you can't be on the team. And, and he chose the YouTube channel. And he chose the YouTube channel, which was a big mistake because then he didn't have any access to UCF stuff because he was off the team. But they would have been penalized if they would have let him keep doing it. It's not that they didn't want him to do it. It was against the rules. Yeah. And so fast forward now. Now kids can get paid. There's just so many crazy rules. Yeah. And, and you got to remember the NCA. This is where everybody gets kind of twisted, right? The NCA. They think that the NCA sits there and makes all these rules. That isn't how it happens. It's the, the presidents. Schools, yeah. It's the presidents of the universities that make the rules. The NCA enforces them. Okay. And so the universities are trying to protect themselves a lot of times. But how so? Well, because you think they really want to pay players? Absolutely not. That's why I'm really shocked that they passed this. Well, they know they have to because it's just so bad. And what? so so one of the reasons a lot of people think that this went through is because of this whole G League thing. And this has already been approved. Oh, that's what I was just going to say. This has already been going on for a while. States have already approved it over a year ago. So this was going to happen. But by these, now a third kid has signed to the G League. He decommitted from UCLA. His name is, and I'm going to butcher it, is Dacian Nix. He was the number one point guard in the country, and he's signing with them now. And they're all making between two hundred to five hundred grand a year. These three guys, and they can do true endorsements, so they can get Nike deals or Adidas or whatever. But this is strictly just basketball. Oh yeah, that's for basketball. That's for the G League. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and people are kind of getting that twisted too. They're like, "Oh, they just want to control these guys and get them in the NBA quicker." Well, yeah, because these guys were starting to go to Australia and play. Yeah. They don't want another brand, another basketball league popping up that can rival the NBA. They want to keep all the talent here. Why wouldn't they? Right. And why can't the kids benefit and legally get paid instead of getting paid under the under the table? Yeah. You know? But I think that in basketball, it's not going to be such a big deal because there's still players that are going to go to college because they want to. But it was funny. I saw this article. It was with John Calipari, the coach for um, Kentucky. Okay. And they were talking about him, and he's a one-and-done factory, right? All the players that would go there would stay one year and go pro. Yeah. He Every year, he has two or three guys. You know, it's like crazy. Him and Charles Barkley were in this article, and they were saying they had educational concerns for these players who stopped preparing for college during their high school years, and then they won't make the G League. Like, these are guys that let their kids go to school for six months and then drop class after the NCAA tournament. Yeah. And they're concerned about education. Oh, my God. Come on. Give seriously. Me give me a break. You know? Give me a break. Break <laughs> me off a piece of that fancy face. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that was on the, uh, the episode of Office. Office yeah. Like. <laughs> so, so, you know, I mean... They're like, I think they're blowing this out of proportion. Yeah, they're only going to take a few kids, but I think they'll keep expanding this program if they want to. But these kids, some kids are still going to want to go to college and play in the NCAA tournament. Let's face it, basketball season is the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Nobody watches college basketball besides that. No, March that's, Madness, that's, that's the only the majority, time yeah, people are watching basketball. That's the majority of people who watch. So it's like, you know, why are you holding these kids back that want to turn pro? At one point, they say... Oh, kids should be able to turn pro from high school. But now they're like, oh, they shouldn't go to the G League where they play on a special team and are coached all day and get paid 500 grand and can have endorsements. They should come to Kentucky. Yeah. But they should be able to turn pro from high school. It's because he's worried about not getting those kids anymore. I mean, I understand, but... But he's just going to get the second tier guys now. I yeah. mean, it's like, you know... They have to do that or else, yeah, exactly what you said. They're not going to get who they want because why would you go... Why would you go if you're not going to get paid? Right. There's no incentive for these to. kids to go to the, to the school. Yeah, there was a kid from North Carolina. They're trying to recruit him, and, and he doesn't want to go. He wants to stay at North Carolina. And let's face it, if you're really going for a year, you're not going to be focused on your education. Yeah. So. And they go to the G League for five months. Yeah. And play basketball every day. Exactly. So, but how do you think this is going to affect college football? That's the more important thing. Okay, so I can see how this is with basketball. That's what I wanted to ask. Is this going to be passed with football? Because I know that oh, they're it's looking... all sports. It's all sports. Yeah, everybody. I mean, this is just crazy to me because there's not really like a G League for football. 
Really? Yeah, but but they have like your arena football or whatever. I mean, I don't even know what's going on with XFL now, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, no, there's but this nothing is, like that. This is because, you know, in college football, you have to stay three years. Okay. You can't go until after your junior year. Yeah. Okay. So you're stuck there. But now these kids will be able to do endorsements. So for instance, that that's the reason I brought up the kicker from UCF. He would be able to have his YouTube page and monetize it. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't do anything about it. So he would be able to make money. And the school probably wouldn't even care. Yeah. You know, they'd be like, okay, do whatever you want. So I think I think there's a difference in between Power 5 schools and the G5 schools. So the Power 5 schools, I don't really think it's going to affect that much. You know, I mean, I think they're going to have endorsements. They're going to have departments in these um, athletic departments now that handle sponsorships for kids, help them get endorsements or that sort of thing. But Alabama's still going to get the best players. LSU, Clemson, Ohio State, they're still going to get the best players. Florida. And Florida. You know, that was a thing over the last five years. Florida ranked, I think, fifth as the best recruiting classes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for kids um, getting drafted in the first or second round. Oh, yeah. Yeah. hundred. So, so they'll all still get um, endorsements, and they'll, they'll keep good players. You know, they're going to keep good players and keep recruiting. The interesting thing is how it's going to affect the lower tier power five schools and the upper tier G five schools. There's, they're actually saying that schools like UCF, Memphis, Cincinnati, SMU will actually jump way up and get a lot better players now because of this, because they're all in big cities. Whereas these smaller um, power five schools, they're kind of isolated out. You can get a lot more endorsements and all and give kids more money. And so those kids are going to be on TV more. I mean, UCF was almost on ESPN or a major network every weekend last year. Right. So where would you want to go? Would you want to go to Kansas and play football or go to UCF? You know, don't answer that. Life load. (laughs) But anyway, you know, a kid, a kid wants to be on TV, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's how they get more endorsements and that. And if you're a starting quarterback, you can do that, you know, or running back or receiver. Gabe Davis, I was looking the other day. He has like something like 30 or 40,000 Instagram followers already. Yeah. And if you it know? doesn't work out, just go on TikTok. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think that's how it's going to affect it. It's going to kind of elevate those upper tier G5 schools. And it's going to push down some of the Power 5 schools. And then the lower G5 schools are just going to get pushed down even more. Yeah. You know, they're they're not even going to be able sad. to compete. It's and so sad. instead of there being a Power 5 and a G5, there's going to be an upper tier, middle tier, and lower tier. And so it's going to, you know, and it's just going to be pushed around like that. And the size of the city, I think, will matter. Right. You know, because there will be more endorsement opportunities. Whatever car company car dealership can sponsor the whole offensive line, you know, and have them on billboards and stuff locally. There's a lot more local money, you know? Right. I think that's how this is going to affect it all. Well, there you have it. Yes! It is trivia time. And I've got one that'll knock your socks off. I want to test how smart you really are. Oh, no. Because Rob is very smart. But I always try to crack them a little bit. Are you ready? I'm kind of scared. You're like pointing at me the whole time. (laughs) It's for dramatic effect. What? Okay. I know. It's audio though, babe. Whatever. Okay. On the periodic table, which element has an atomic weight of (laughs) 1.00794? Why are you looking at me like that? Hydrogen. <laughs> oh my god, I hate you. Did I get it? Yes, you got it. Yes! <laughs> I didn't know if you were looking at me like, are you seriously asking me this question or... Yeah, are you seriously offending me and asking me <laughs> such an easy question? I, that was easy? You know I read the periodic table every night before bed. Oh, Lord. Okay. And with that, 
Let's wrap up with a would you rather. You have to tell people out there. I really didn't. You didn't tell me this. This was real. I did not tell him this. He's a uh, seriously. He's a genius. Well, I don't know. He claims he is a genius. If you guys would like to DM us on Instagram some trivia questions and we will be happy to say them and I will be happy to give them to Rob. You could give them to me, but I probably will get it wrong. So, (laughs) okay, so let's wrap up with a would you rather. All right. And this was not by my choice. Oh, who was it from? We got we got a, a DM from somebody that wanted me to say this would you rather. Okay, I'm really scared now. It might have been Mr. X, I'm not sure. So don't come for me because this one is pretty gnarly. Okay. All right. Would you rather slice your eye in half with a razor blade or swallow 10 needles? 10 needles. I can't slice my eyeball. I, I don't. I You'd can't. be like, mm, you yeah, know, I like trying to it. get context in. You're like, no. <laughs> 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 context with a blade on it. Um, Do you remember the saw where they had to take the key out of the oh eyeball? My gosh. That freaked me out. I did not like that. First of all, I had to sadly introduce Rob to all of the saw movies like a couple years ago because you, you were like late to the bandwagon yeah yeah i missed those so we were like you know i love halloween i love like scary things it's just fun to me yeah. so we were casually talking about scary movies and i was like oh my gosh i don't know if you would consider saw scary but it's like a psychological thriller or whatever i casually asked him i, I said have you seen saw and he was like no i said stop what you're doing right now we're going to go and watch it. I think it was more like you made a joke. You were like, do you want to play a little game? And, you and I looked at it. you like you were an alien. And you're like, seriously? what? You've never seen Saw before? Yeah, I was like, seriously? What planet yeah. are you from? And I said, no, I've never seen it. You're like, we're watching it now. And I think we watched, what, three or four that day? Oh. We watched a few of them that day. I don't know. But but yeah, we the first one it. is epic. The first oh, one is that's epic. the best. The other ones are kind yeah, of that's the crazy. Best one. Okay, so... Yeah. So during Saul, one of them is he has a key behind his eye and he has to dig it out yeah. before the thing his it's clamped onto his head, like or attached to his head clamps on his face. Yeah. yeah. Basically. Spikes in the skull. Something like that, right? Can you really swallow ten needles? No. I probably can't cut my eyeball either. So I don't know. I don't even it's a know. would you rather. I don't even know. I don't know. I probably would try to swallow swallow the needles yeah probably they would get stuck though in your throat just like a clean like just like uh, clean (laughs) all the way through (laughs) falls right out your butt right clean clean (laughs) okay guys well thank you so much for joining us on this show and we will catch you next time bye thank you for listening to sports bliss with rob and chris Available on Anchor.fm, Apple Podcast, Spotify, and everywhere else fine podcasts are found. Follow us on Instagram and leave voice comments at 407-494-6420. This has been a Sports Bliss with Rob and Chris production.